Lacey went missing Christmas Eve. She's 27 years old and she is over eight months pregnant. Law enforcement zoned in on Scott immediately. I knew he had killed her. Our family has known since the beginning that Scott is innocent. So you have someone who goes missing in this window of time and you have a felony occurring in this window of time. And to think that they're not related, it's a difficult thing to ignore. It's been 18 years and there should be answers to questions. I think if people step back and look at the evidence in this case, they're gonna see this crime isn't solved. I'm ready to go back to court. Let's do it again. I'd be ready to testify. I'd go back at it again because he deserves to be where he is. Yes, uh, my daughter is convincing stuff this morning. She's eight months pregnant. She took her dog for a walk in the park. The story of Lacey Peterson's disappearance made news soon after she disappeared, because it's Christmas Eve 2002. It became national news pretty quickly. And she is carrying their first child. She's just weeks out from birth. Scott and Lacey Peterson, I mean, it's right out of a, a, a romance novel. They were college sweethearts. Describe your son. He was a very affectionate, just just a really kind, you know, sweet little guy. Never in trouble of any kind. Lacey, by all accounts, was just a bundle of energy and was always concerned about helping other people. They had been married not very long. They had bought the house a couple of years earlier. Lacey was a, a homemaker. How did Scott feel about the fact that he was going to be a father? Very excited. It seems that when she got pregnant, with Connor, things started going sideways. The first person you focus at in a homicide investigation is the person closest to the victim and the last person to see the victim. And of course, boom, boom, we got both of those with Scott. He claims that he woke up in the morning and he and Lacey had breakfast together. He thought maybe he was gonna play golf, but because it was rainy and cold, he decided not to play golf, but to go fishing. Scott finished fishing that day at some point in the afternoon and made a phone call to Lacey. Hey, beautiful. I won't be able to get to Villa Farms to get that basket for Papa. I was hoping you would get this message and uh, go on out there. I'll see you in a bit, sweetie. Love you. Bye. I mean, Scott's telling me when I interview him, when I get home, her car is in the driveway. So I entered through the back gate. Mackenzie came running up to me. Um, he did have his leash on, which isn't that weird. I learned Lacey was missing when Scott called that evening and asked if she was at our house. Immediately, he came back with saying that she was missing. And I remember feeling that just a little agitated about that word, the word that he used, missing. I was like, how can you be missing? She's not missing. There was no evidence of a struggle or no evidence of tampering or forced entry. There was nothing that was missing from the house. So of course the police start looking at him. So he was questioned for over seven hours the first night that Lacey went missing. He just doesn't seem like the guy whose wife is missing. His demeanor was suspicious. We began an immediate search of the park and river areas. I always blame the husband, and I am almost always right. I start with the presumption that the husband did it. But there were alternative theories. One is she was kidnapped by a satanic cult. Another one was a burglary that was across the street from the Peterson home. I mean, sure, the police needed to look at other possibilities, but they needed to stay on Scott. They needed to do what they did. There's absolutely no physical evidence at all that Scott committed this crime. We pretty much dealt with all of the satanic cults, the dog walkers. The only thing we couldn't eliminate was Scott. Earlier this week, the Modesto Police Department was made aware of an article that was to appear in the National Inqu Enquirer revealing new information regarding Lacey's case. The family members were shown very recent pictures of Scott and a girlfriend. Okay, first of all, I met Scott Peterson November 20th, 2002. Scott told me he was not married. We did have a romantic relationship. Amber Fry had met with detectives and gave information about the relationship with Scott Peterson. And Amber Fry has been eliminated 
as a suspect in Lacey Peterson's disappearance. I was just starting my career in massage therapy. You know, my daughter was very young, very small, and a single mother. He was good looking, he was nice, he was funny, and um, attentive to me. She really thought she had Mr. Right. Scott knew Amber for 16 days when he got caught being married. He was very emotional and said that this would be the first holidays without her. And he was crying at that point. Uh, I took it as she died, didn't know how, if, you know, an accident or cancer. Or I had no idea. Um, I didn't pry. She didn't know about Scott and Lacey missing until her friend told her, hey, that guy you brought to the Christmas party, he's on TV every day. And so I went to the other room and called the Modesto Police Department hotline. Amber Fry started cooperating with police. I buy her a tape recorder with some cassette tapes and a wire that can hook onto her phone. And I tell her, OK, if he ever calls, just push these two buttons and just talk normal. The phone rings, and it's Scott Peterson. I'm like, that's him. <laughs> Showtime, girl. Amber. Hey, happy New Year. Happy New Year. I wanted to call you. Thank you. What they heard on December 31st, 2002, was a Scott Peterson who, while a candlelight vigil is being held for his missing wife, and he's attending it, is also on the phone with Amber Fry, being recorded unbeknownst to him, telling her that he's in Europe. I'm uh, near the Eiffel Tower. New Year's celebration is unreal. You've got, I mean, this guy's wife is missing. The entire country is looking for her. And he's not only keeping his girlfriend at bay, He's entertaining her with these outlandish lies. Amber Fry was critical to the case because she provides a motive for why now. To commit a crime like this, you have to have a screw loose at the very least. And those Amber Fry tapes made it seem like Scott Peterson has a screw loose. Scott, why don't you answer some questions? He now is enemy number one. Everybody hates Scott Peterson. Did you murder your wife? Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.